St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three anonymous donors. The first donor is from New Waterford, Nova Scotia, for the living and deceased members of her family, and thanksgiving for blessings received for the return of family members to their faith and for a special intention. The second is from St. Catharines, Ontario, in thanksgiving for the televised Mass and for a special intention. The third donors are from Burnaby, British Columbia, for their children's return to the faith and for family and friends who are ill. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. My friends, we gather here to celebrate God's love for us in this Eucharist. In order to enter it fully, let us call to mind our sins and let us ask God for his pardon and his peace. You are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, free your church from sin and protect it from evil. Guide us, for we cannot be saved without you. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Adam. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now, the Arameans on one one of their raids had taken a young girl capture from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, He tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death and life? That this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how far he will go in picking a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's home. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me at least he would surely come out and stand out and call on the name of his Lord, his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfa the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? 
He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he has said is, wash and be clean. So, Naaman went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young man, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. My soul is searching for the living God. When shall I see him face to face? My soul is thirsting for the living God. When shall I see him face to face? As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My soul is... Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain and to your dwelling. My soul is thirsting for the eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth and spoke to the people in the synagogue 
And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus must have felt that his life was turning against him that day in his hometown synagogue. The welcome that he first received and the honor of reading at the service was quickly replaced by his warning that the children of Israel may find themselves outside of God's mercy. It even led to the murderous intent of his friends and neighbors to dispose of Jesus by throwing him off a cliff. The teachings and attitude of Jesus made him dangerous to their religious beliefs. There is nothing that is as cold and intolerant of the opinions of others as a mindset of those who feel they must protect their faith from the heresy of a different opinion. In this modern era, we still have among us the equivalent of those narrow-minded town people of Nazareth. They are prevalent in every religion. They are those closed ones who close their minds and seek the destruction of another whom they believe is not pious, is not a good example of faith, but is evil incarnate. The people in Jesus' hometown synagogue thought that they were doing the work of God, but they were not. They were lost, confused souls who were trying to protect their own comfortable existence from the threat of the one who seemed to be closer to God than they were. Jesus did not have his head buried in the sand. He knew that what he said in that synagogue would be the beginning of his troubles, and that life would soon turn against him as quickly as these people whom he grew up with. He was aware of the dangers and the confrontations that were to come. Jesus knew his time among his people would be short and that he would not have the time to teach them everything that he needed to teach them. But soon time would run out, and the life he chose would start to turn against him. At one time or another, the life we have chosen may seem to turn against us as well. Perhaps someone is terribly ill, and we do everything we can for them. We hope and pray that person will get well, but they do not. And it seems like life has turned against us. There may come a time when something we hoped for and prayed for or thought that would never happen to us becomes a reality and feels like life again is closing in around us. Perhaps someone we love very much no longer loves us or a friend we have known all of our lives betrays us or someone has started a campaign of rumor and gossip to undermine our position at work. It hurts deeply, and it feels like life has turned against us. Perhaps it is our own sin and guilt that is eating away at our insides. No one else may know about our sins and failures, but we know, and we feel unworthy, sick and lost. Our life on the inside of our hearts and minds is a mass of guilt and shame. And it seems like life has turned against us. What do we do when this happens? How do we fight back? Do we throw up our hands and quit? What do we do when life turns against us? We do what Jesus did. First, we seek out friends who will walk with us. That is what Jesus did. Throughout his ministry, it was his most intimate friendships with his disciples that helped Jesus find some peace and some comfort. 
When we are desperate and life seems to be getting us down, we should seek out people with whom we are comfortable, those we love and care about. They do not have to say much. They just need to be people of faith whom we care about and who care about us. They do not have to make our problems disappear, but we will discover in them a comfort and a peace that grows in our hearts and in our lives. And secondly, when life turns against us, we must turn to God. That's what Jesus does. Whenever Jesus was thrilled, threatened, he would slip away and find a quiet place where he could be alone with God. Jesus knelt in prayer when he was grappling with his fear and his pain, when his life was closing around him. He reached out for the hand of God. Through prayer, Jesus sought strength from God, his Father, because he knew that with God, the darkness would not overwhelm him. So when life is closing in on you, seek out the comfort and support of your friends. When it seems the whole world rejects you and life has turned against you, reach out in prayer for that hand of God. When you are linked to the Father in heaven through prayer, you will discover the strength and the faith to face whatever comes in this life. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us through times of trial, that we may be open to the witness of Christ and comfort and conform our lives to his way, his truth, and his life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the love of Christ will illuminate our lives and help us to trust in him in times of distress, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will strengthen those in our television community and help them to follow his light in times of personal struggle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's merciful and loving hand will gather to himself all those who have died in the world these days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, help us to fashion lives of faith and strengthen us with your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, and will become the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let's speak out for Our God bless you. We see you because we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this church. Father, bless these gifts that they may become the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You ask us to express our thanks by self-denial. We are to master our sinfulness and conquer our pride. We are to show to those in need your goodness to ourselves. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever. i 
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Christ is Lord of all ages. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let's be ready when I see one. For those of you at home, join with me now in a prayer by Father J. Bourgeau of North Bay. He calls it Quiet Time. Lighting the candle this morning, I sit quietly before it. This is time set aside for God and me to be together. I wait in stillness. I listen. God listens. God is never too busy to listen. My heart is open. I come empty, I come in hope, I come in need to be made anew. Come, Lord, your presence is creative, life-giving. Cleanse and refresh me, encourage and strengthen me for the day ahead. Thank you for our time together. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, forgive the sins of those who receive your sacrament and bring us together in unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. And speak of God. Thanks to three anonymous donors. The first from New Waterford, Nova Scotia. The second from St. Catharines, Ontario. The third donors are from Burnaby, British Columbia. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C to M6.